Howdy folks. I want to welcome you to the campfire. A place where we can just sit and tell a story or two and we can ponder on the unusual and mysterious things that occur out here in the wild. I'll tell you some of my stories and, and well, you can tell me some of yours. This is Clay Steele. Come join me around the campfire here beneath the stars. Grab a cup of coffee or a cold drink and let's talk about our stories. Can't wait. So this one here is by Rick Shaw. It's called Strangeness in the South 40. Well, it's kind of a good story, so I'd like to read it to you. Well, our farm operation was several years behind the times. The neighbors planted straight rows using GPS and enjoyed the comfortable, controlled environment of modern tractors. We didn't always have the luxury of a cab. And guided by dead reckoning. Well, the tractors that did have cabs were, were nothing more than a noisy box to shelter from wind and rain. I had learned to layer clothing to utilize my own body heat. I actually preferred to drive an open station tractor anyway. There was just something about the feel and the smell this evening. The chill fall air was pleasant against the only thing that was exposed, my face. I could smell the rich earth as the dirt glided and rolled through the three bottom plow I was pulling. The tractor I was operating was a favorite. It was built several years before I was even born. But the machine stood up proudly to the duties ass of it. The old Farmall M purred like the well-tuned machine it was. Now, I admired the shine of the red hood before me. Hints of warmth came from the exhaust stack that lightly glowed from the work strain. It was a wonderful evening to be farming. And dusk was starting to darken the pale, clear sky now. That colorful pastel canvas displayed shades of blue and green and hints of red. You've seen that. It wasn't quite dark enough to really need lights, although the shadows were starting to creep from the timbered field edge. Now, darkness was beginning to claim the landscape. Now, this particular area of the farm, you could give a particular sense of forbidding. Tonight revealed to be one of those times of eeriness. So I had a turnaround coming up. The edge of the field was shaded by the, by the darkening timber. I noticed some corn stalks were jamming up my middle plow shear, and that would need to be cleaned out before the mass plugged up tightly. So I rolled to a stop, and I idled the tractor down. So, sighing dejectedly, I stood and stepped backwards over the pan seat down to the U-shape of the draw bar. And after a pause to look around, I stepped further down onto the ground. Now, after taking out an earplug, my hearing adjusted to the surroundings. It was silent, just way too quiet. The only sound was the tractor engine idling, and this was very peculiar. I gazed slowly and carefully around, but I sure didn't see anything out of the ordinary. You know, I should be hearing crickets. Maybe some other woodland cadences, but, but nothing. All I could hear were my footsteps loudly crunching in the dead corn stalks as I maneuvered to clear the plowshare. My body felt like electric adrenaline was quickly flowing, which caused me to go on high alert. I couldn't shake the feeling as if I was being watched. I quickly bent to my task. The sooner I could get back on the operator's seat, the sooner I could move on, you see. Tink! A rock the size of my fist slammed the shear to my right. I jumped back, barely missed cracking my head against the plow frame. As I turned to scan the tree line, another large rock zipped just inches past my head. There had been power propelling the object. I heard a whiz sound as it passed, impacting the ground with a loud thump behind me. When my eyes darted and my head turned quickly, pivoting back and forth, where'd those rocks come from, I wondered. I didn't see anything in the darkening woods, but I knew something or someone was out there. And I couldn't shake the feeling I was being watched still. That tingly feeling in my neck just hadn't gone away. Now those rocks came from somewhere, I reasoned aloud. There was a shadowy movement, however vague. I tried to reason it was just being the wind, even though it was dead calm still. I had to return to removing the plugged shear but I didn't feel comfortable turning my back to the forest. So I bent to my task with major misgivings. Even working quickly, I, I couldn't finish the task fast enough. 
One final tug and the mess was free and clear. Hurriedly I stood and I moved to climb back on the tractor. What the? I exclaimed, not finishing my thoughts. A very large, dark, indescribable shadow. It moved directly in front of me. Out of the darkness, a man-shaped form materialized. This was nobody I recognized. I judged the figure to stand at least eight foot tall. Now, a very primitive looking being with menacing dark eyes stood just beyond my tractor. Dark hair covered a majority of the naked body. And this was very decidedly male. There's no doubt about it. A big and strong looking thing. So we, we stood within a few short yards from each other. I was trembling with fear. But I just stood my ground trying to hide my terror. I could feel a penetrating gaze as if I was being measured and evaluated. Finally, the mighty beast nonchalantly turned and, and it walked away as if it were being dismissed. I heard a loud crunch behind me and I quickly turned to see a, a large fleeting shadow disappear into the woods on my right. There had been more than one of them. Well, shakily collecting myself, I climbed back into the operator's chair on wobbling legs. I was done plowing for the evening. In fact, I picked a higher gear to get back to the homestead. My heart rate began to calm as the barn lot came into sight. I see I felt more secure the further away from the timber I was. Feeling safer, I slowed the tractor to a more reasonable speed. Our vintage equipment was never abused and treated with more respect than I had just shown. Now, did that really happen? What did I see? I'd been there and was still processing the event. Had it been nothing but my imagination? Well, while I let the tractor idle to cool down, I walked back and examined the plow. The rock throne that had impacted the plow shear left a chalk-like mark. Tangible proof, but my mind still held doubt. Had I seen a mythical cryptid? Do they really exist, even in the Midwest? Well, I didn't get harassed about coming in with darkness quickly falling. The old Reliable M didn't have the best lighting, which made it hard to see at night, and the bitter chill was overtaking any warmth found as the sunlight had retreated. It was time to call it a day anyway. Well, the very next day, I had great trepidation, realizing I had to go back and finish plowing that South 40. The duty still needed completing, regardless of my attitude. Now, all the while fueling the old M up and greasing the plow, I tried to swallow most of my fear down. I stalled around the barn lot for as long as I could. The internal dread was weighing heavy on me. Well, I sat back behind the steering wheel and headed back to the field. Traveling down the farm lane, I reasoned to myself that it had just been my overactive imagination. I'm just tired, I figured. The morning began with no incident. The day became slightly warmer as the sun rose higher in the pale sky. My eyes were constantly scanning all the scenery and my head was constantly swiveling in, in every direction possible. I was seeking any abnormalities hiding in the darker forest. It was difficult to stay focused on the task at hand. That electric adrenaline feeling had returned. I sensed I was being watched again. My nose soon alerted me to a very offensive smell. It was, it was stronger when I neared the tree line. The pungent odor of wet, rank, dirty dog combined with the smell of dead animals attacked my sinuses. A skunk would have smelled more pleasant. Bile threatened to choke me. The smell was horrific. What is that? I choked aloud. I don't remember any horrible odors last night. The stink would fade and then grow worse as I near the woods. The whole issue puzzled me. I wanted to believe it was a nightmarish trick of my, of my imagination. Well... I had planned to plow this field so that, so that I'd work my way out to the edges after starting from the middle. So each pass drew me closer and closer to the tree line, see? So I regretted my actions after last night's bizarre occurrence. The tree line felt as if it was closing in, making it easier for the, the villainized specters to reach out and grab me right off that operator's seat. Now my imagination had gone into overdrive. Fortunately, the corn stalks weren't hampering the plow, I wasn't really comfortable with the idea of stopping to clean out a plug anyway. I felt vulnerable enough slowly moving back and forth in the open. 
Now, this was one of the very few times I would have rather dealt with the noisy confinements of, of a cab. There probably wouldn't have been any more safety in an enclosed area, though. I mean, that's nothing more than a false sense of security. Well, a rock zipped past my ear with fierce intensity. That projectile had been close enough I felt it brush the side of my head. One inch closer and I'd been struck in the eye. My immediate reaction was to mash the clutch pedal, bringing the tractor to an abrupt halt. Angrily, I looked all around, but observed nothing out of the ordinary. Now it wasn't the reaction of fear. I was mad. I didn't imagine that, I muttered. After calming myself, I assessed the situation with more reason. The only place of concealment that rock could have come from was was still a good distance. Whoever or whatever made that pitch had more power and accuracy than a major league pitcher. Plus, the intelligence to know vulnerable points was also demonstrated. This knowledge was rather disturbing. Whoever launched that rock was making it abundantly clear I was unwanted in this vicinity. It would seem I had engaged in a territorial battle, I thought. Well, I heard the sound of another tractor in the distance. The volume was increasing. I observed another plow unit headed to the field. I sat back down and eased out the clutch, and the old M started forward with a little strain. I had my doubts, but maybe I'd be safer with the increase in numbers. The plowing force soon increased again. Shortly, there were three tractors and plows working in unison. A three-bottom plow pulled by another M, and an old John Deere fell into the work. The old A's distinctive chugging sound overtook most most of the created human noise pollution. The electric feeling of adrenaline faded in short time, and I started to get more comfortable now that there was companionship. Maybe this territorial war had been won, for now. It never occurred to me the unpleasant odor still lingered until I observed one of the other operators sniff in the air. He gave me a puzzled look, pinched his nose, and just shrugged, indicating he found the smell strange and offensive. He asked me later when we had stopped if I'd hit a skunk. Well, maybe I hadn't imagined all this after all. Well, there you all. That's a pretty good story from Rick Shaw. Now take care of yourselves. I will be here next time you can make it to the campfire. Until then, this is Clay Steele. Good night.